Let's do it. Well, welcome everybody. Hi, I'm, I'm Becky Margiata. I'm the co-founder and the principal owner of a small business called the Billions Institute. We help uh, nonprofit leaders who are ready to go to scale, go to scale. Uh, up until the pandemic, all of our events were live and in person. And maybe like many of you, including the Green Lining Institute, we are uh, pivoting to doing things virtually and getting very accustomed to Zoom rooms and such. Mm -hmm. uh, but my real passion is helping people design and lead large scale change. And the idea is if you have something that works in one place, how can you get it to everywhere? But the the paradox being, you still only have what Sharon Salzberg calls your three feet three of influence that you only just get, you get that this is no matter how big your ambitions are, you still have to do the inside work for, for it to work out. So uh, Susan, on to you. Uh, my name is Susan X. Jane. I'm the principal of Navigators Consulting, and I focus on culture um, from microculture, looking at stuff like organizational culture or um, dynamics in the workplace, um, all the way up to big scale culture. And I am a recovering professor, and my area of study was media studies and communications, and oddly, also the apocalypse. Who would have thought that racial disparities and race and representation and the apocalypse and organizational change would come together. But here we are in this moment. Um, so I'm a trainer and a coach, and I'm also a writer, and I like to focus on issues of race, helping people to find ways to stand in solidarity so that we can all get free. Recovering Great. professors. That's great. We have a couple of other recovering professors as well. And, and 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 uh, Susan and I go go back a couple of years, and she's been someone who's been a real mentor to me in uh, inclusion, diversity, equity, uh, racial justice, social justice, and uh, um, she's on the, the. We have a fellowship in, uh, in the Billion Institute. She's on the faculty at the fellowship, so we get to work together and talk together a lot. And we're she's working very intensely on a book that that I'm writing, but Susan's words are sprinkled throughout and attributed as such. So. It's a, a real, real pleasure to get to collaborate with you, Susan. So yeah, I love being in your DMs. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and so, uh, so I think Susan, you were going to set the context for all of us about the apocalypse, and we're really going to take take you through uh, a resilience exercise experientially on like who do you want to be in this time, and both at the personal level, interpersonal, institutional, and more ideological. So we're, we're going to walk you through this together. Uh, it's intended to be play, play along as you go with us. So uh, Susan, mm -hmm. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to welcome all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I know some people are saying they're having a little trouble with the video. So hopefully you guys will be able to sort that out and get a chance to see us. Um, and so we find ourselves in this moment. And as somebody that spent a lot of time studying the apocalypse and particularly apocalyptic cinema, and what stories about the end of the world were telling us about the culture that we live in now, I felt like this was a great moment to share some of what I learned about there because it's really helpful to us to navigate this in moment in a way that feels a little less panicky, panicky and a little more like leveraging an opportunity. Like I said, I'm a recovering professor, so you already know what it is. It's gonna be slides. So I'm gonna share some slides with you guys now. Um, so hopefully you can see them and I'm gonna flip it. All right, are we good? Someone just tell me if we're good. Yeah. I don't see them yet, but it might be. All right, hold on. A Let minute. Me... Uh, Very exciting. Do, do, do. All right, here we go. Here they come. Something's happening. There we go. All right. But it's but they're mini. They're not. They're not big. Here yet. they are. Now you can see it big. All right. Excellent. Um, so uh, we're talking about resilience in the apocalypse, and here we are, we're in the apocalypse. Um, how do I know? Because the apocalypse isn't really about the end of the world. The apocalypse is a moment of unveiling, and we've actually had a lot of them. And as you know, the world is still here. So the root of the word apocalypse comes to us from the Greek, and what it means is an unveiling. It means to uncover. And so <clears throat> as we think about moments of the apocalypse, they really aren't these terrifying end of the world scenarios where everybody dies. But in fact, they're actually times of great unveiling and opportunity. Um, and so there are some things that we can learn by looking at stories of the apocalypse and human narratives of the apocalypse that'll help us leverage this moment. All right. Whoop. 
All right, so here's what you need to know, the quick and dirty. If you watch a lot of movies about the end of the world, some of this will look really familiar to you. Uh, if you guys were on earlier, I was talking about I Am Legend, literally a story about a guy stuck in New York trying to find a vaccine for a pandemic that has wiped out the world. Um, and so these movies about the end of times are created by us. And these stories tell us what we think about will happen when moments of destabilization happen. So first of all, know that the apocalypse is an unveiling, that it's not actually an ending. And I think there's a lot of fear that these events are going to come and that everything as we know will never be the same again. And that part is true. But what's not true is that we're not all gonna die. The world will be here, we will be here, this situation will end and we'll come out of it. But it is a moment that unveils kind of the code that is running the world that we think we know um, underneath it. Uh, the end of the world always ushers in the beginning of a new one. So if we think about this pandemic, and if we think about movies about the apocalypse and stories of the apocalypse, usually it starts with somebody in this moment of crisis, and the story goes from there. The stories about the apocalypse, as we have been consuming them in American media in the last decade or so, are really about what do we do to put the world back together after a moment of inflection? And that's exactly where we find ourselves now. Um, if you guys are a fan of The Walking Dead, you'll know this is from the very first episode of The Walking Dead. It's been on for seven years, so it's not the end of the world, it's the beginning of building a new one. What's most destabilized during the time of an apocalypse is the status quo. Um, so if we think about movies around uh, the apocalypse where there's the end of the world, we have scraggly bands of people kind of roving around Max, Ma Mad Max style. And that's about us really reconnecting at hyper local levels because massive systems and the status quo have broken down. So if we think about the apocalypse as a time that is destabilizing systems that we know are oppressive, then we can really start to see this as a time of opportunity. The inciting incident that starts the apocalypse may feel like an end, and it may be this, you know, kind of chaotic upheaval, but that what happens afterwards is that the world will continue to change for a long period of time. Uh, a lot of apocalyptic movies start with a crazy event like The Walking Dead or This is Children of Men where people just stop having babies. But the real story is about the world afterwards, the post-apocalyptic world where people have enormous power to shape what will be and what will come next. So those stories in apocalyptic cinema um, can really help us think about what might be coming. But apocalyptic stories in the real world, times where we have seen massive upheaval in the real world are also followed by huge moments of opportunity. If we think about the Black Plague, if we think about the rebuilding of America after our many apocalypses, if we think about massive changes in the world, we are always rebuilding new worlds. We are always creating a new normal. Culture is fluid. And that means that this moment of fear and panic is also a moment of opportunity to look at the status quo, to call it what it is, and to make something new. So most importantly, this is the moment for change. I'm going to hand it over to you, Becky. Awesome. Um, Y'all, just so you know, every conversation I have with Susan makes me feel better. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like yeah, apocalypse. <laughs> I'm like, Don't, Don't worry. The apocalypse is all good. Yeah. But the thing I think you were talking about, um, like the, the, because the structures are so weak, the opportunity individuals have more power than ever before. And, and together, collectively, we have more than ever before. So to pull that, that through line through, what, where's the opportunity in that? So um, mm -hmm. If you could go to the next slide, please. I just wanted to capture just a small bit of this moment. Now I took some, I copied and pasted some headlines. Some of them I just heard this morning even of uh, just like what is happening that this, un, it's for many of us, it's not, it's not an unveiling. It was just, we knew it. We knew it all along. We knew it because it was in our own bodies and, and for the, Every day there are headlines around the 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 dis differential impacts on different communities, um, and uh, and what's happening. Right. So uh, this is 
this is huge. It's just a small smattering of, of unveilings. Um, and uh, earlier today, Alicia Garza was talking about that there's an intersection of a triple crisis of uh, the pandemic itself, the economic crisis, and then a crisis of democracy. And Susan and I were just riffing earlier. Susan was suggesting there's even a cultural crisis on top of that, right? And um, and I think this feeds into all of them. We're also, if you could go to the next slide, I think there's a, a reality interpretation crisis where there's very, very different stories enabled by our internet of what is real. Uh, uh, and people are living from very different mental models and ideologies of what it is you have on the top left. You have people taking this very seriously and taking doing what they can to protect themselves and one another. And then on the bottom right, you have what I think some people have said accurately looks like uh, something taken from a zombie apocalypse movie, but it's actually just people protesting. <laughs> um, and uh, these different realities also, I think, is just a big part of what we're playing up here against. Um, and then a little bit of the opportunities, which I feel like I can't even all the way see or taste, but the, that's part of what this session is about, is uh, if you go to the Prison Policy Initiative website, they have literally dozens and dozens and dozens of prisons and jails that are decarcerating, right? And and how they're going about it, doing it, and policy support for how to do that. Um, here in LA, our air quality has been better than it ever has been. Uh, for the like, I'm just going down these headlines here. That uh, yesterday in the Atlantic, no one's going back to the office, right? And just think about the mm -hmm. implications of that for climate change and and for new ways of working, and even for quality of life. Uh, not being able to work from home is generally associated with a 20% pay raise, because you get that much of your life back. I've been doing it since 07. I am like uh, uh, very bad for office cultures uh, and disruptive. Uh, uh, telehealth, our biggest client is the National Health Service in England. They've been talking about doing telemedicine for 10 years. They did it in 10 days, right? There's these huge large scale change opportunities. Um, the bottom right one, homeschooling during the coronavirus will set back a whole new generation of children. I just put that on there as a provocation. I'm not 100% sure that's true. I think from all my work I've done with uh, the Riggs Foundation and the building equitable learning environments, um, and, and back to Abrams, uh, Kendi's, you know, just stipulated it's racist. We've known that the school system was was getting getting produce it racist and producing racist results in so many ways. This is a control alt delete potentially on that as well. But this, the, that we've got to seize the moment as parents, whoever. I've got two young ones who may interrupt us at any moment here. The other one I just want to call out is there's this article I'm haunted by in the New York Times about just give, just use the computer at the Fed to give more money. And they literally have the clip of a former Fed chair saying when they need to make more money, he goes into a spreadsheet and he changes a number in a spreadsheet. Voila, there is more money in the economy. They don't even have to print more money. It's not about taxes. It's just made up. It's totally made up. But then you look at the percentage of debt and and, and everyone's like, oh, we can't go into debt. Well, it's, we're, we're much lower as a percentage of debt than any other time. There's money there. This is, is all could be blown up, right? This is like, there's huge, huge, huge opportunities. Um, but we want to now take this apocalypse context, this, this, you know, all these things going on, but also the opportunities and now make it personal for you of your own resilience of what you want to do. So one of the things we're going to take you through is Susan's going to lead a guided meditation, and then we're going to lead you through some questions uh, to sort of pull through the wisdom of the people who've gone before us. And Susan did this, this a similar meditation with our fellows, and it was one of the most profound things I've ever done in our lives. So if you can kind of find your way to get to a space where you can uh, receive a real, just a beautiful gift from Susan. I wanna invite you to do that. So Susan, back to you. All right, so wherever you are, um, let's try to get really comfortable in our place. Hopefully you have some comfortable pants on and you're feeling relaxed. Um, and I want you to just try to power down for a little bit. If you can, um, or if it's right for you, put your feet flat on the ground and you might wanna close your eyes cause we're gonna try to do a little imagining. So we wanna try to cut out the outside world for a moment and just take some deep breaths with me here. So breathe in. And breathe out. All morning, you've had so much information coming at you. Let's just start out by taking a pause, a deep breath, 
Let all the fear and the anxieties out. Take a deep breath. And I want you to just try to tune into yourself, tune into your own heartbeat, the thrum of your own life. I have headphones in so I can hear my heartbeat. Taking a deep breath and thinking about the blood that's running through your veins right now. It's not new blood. It's not just you that's in there. Think about all the people that have come before you and the ways in which their experiences and their memories encoded in your DNA are just flowing through you and just let them flow through you. A generation of ancestors, a dozen of generations, a hundred generations, 2,000 years of ancestors, some of them traveling across the ocean to get here by force, some of them arriving here by choice, all of them a through line to you. With the future so uncertain, let's travel back into the past. This isn't the first time we've felt these kinds of things. In your blood, in your ancestors' lives, go back a generation. What kind of challenges did they face? What choices were in their hands? What choices weren't? Go back a handful of generations. Who were your people? And what were they doing? 50 years ago, 70 years ago. Where were your people during the 1918 epidemic? What did they learn? What lessons did they have that are still in you today? Take a moment in your mind and reach back, reach back as far as you can to a time when the people that came before you faced their own kind of apocalypse. What were they doing? What kind of choices did they have to make? What kind of choices did they not have? Put yourself in their world. Look around so different. What's the same? Look to them. Speak to them. I want you to reach out and ask. Ask them for the thing that will help you. Connect the past build a bridge to the future? What is the lesson that they learned? The lesson that's been in you this whole time? The thing that you need for this moment, reach out your hand, open up your hand, look at your hand and close your hand around the gift they're giving you. Feel the weight and the power of the past as it pulses in your palm across a hundred years and grip that gift and hold it tight and fly across the generations from the apocalypse of the past across oceans to the present. When you're ready, take a deep breath and come on back. Thank you, Susan. Um, yeah, oh God, that's so beautiful. 
Um, I want to invite people as they're coming back and I don't want to uh, be too interruptive because it's such a beautiful meditative space, but yeah, lots of people are coming in with thank you. And I also want to invite people if you want to, to chat in what your ancestors want you to bring forward. Uh, yeah, this is really, it's, I told y'all it'd be good, right? It's, it's, it's yeah. As not me, yo, that's what's in your blood. That's what's in your blood. It's there, it's there. I can't wait to hear what you guys saw. Where did you go? What's the gift? Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, while we were, we're looking for people to chat these in, when I did this, my, I end up back in my, my, my ancestors in Croatia who were, were poor and, and, uh, uh, they gave me a potato and they just started laughing. And I was like, that's it. They're like, yeah, and they started laughing on my dad's side of the family. One thing I really appreciate was they, they were extremely poor and homeless and lived in, 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 um, lived in, uh, subsidized housing. And, uh, but they sure did have a sense of humor though, you know, and they never lost that. And, uh, mm -hmm. so I really appreciate that uh, about them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, empathy, love, strength. So people, uh, Eunice, thank you for connecting our present with our ancestral past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we hold that gift? A cob of heirloom, rainbow corn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Masha, I'm so glad you're here. That's right. Mm -hmm. I don't, Masha, I don't even know if, they, if, 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 if people in Croatia, if, if potatoes is a, is a Croatian crop. <laughs> yeah, right? A burlap yeah. draft gift. Oh, this is awesome. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. Like all we have to do is reach out and it is right there. Those gifts are right there. It's so exciting. Beautiful. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Thank, thank you. Yeah. That was awesome. All right. That was awesome. Ooh, I'm, all, I'm all jazzed up myself. <laughs> So, this is great. This is great. Thank you, Susan. So, so now building on that, we've got this gift um, and we have this moment. We have this unique moment where our powers as individuals and collectively is, is stronger than ever, this resilience, because our institutions are weaker than ever. Um, I may have, did we lose Susan? Well, hopefully she'll come back. Susan, please come back. <laughs> and uh, good. And uh, we want to, take you through the opportunity to do some introspection, some reflection, see what comes up with you with what is the, what is it that you have an absolute full body? Yes. To continue to express in the world now um, and going forward and, or what do you have an absolute no to continuing, whether it's, and we're going to take you through different levels. So individual interpersonal, but then we'll move into structural and ideological just so that kind of, pulling through that gift from the past, but then grounding yourself all the way in the presence, using your own body as, as a tool, as a, as a, as part of your body wisdom to tap into your yeses and your nos at different levels. So just conceptually, very quickly, I learned about just this way of doing yeses and nos from one of my mentors, Dr. Kathleen Hendricks. And the way I learned about it was almost like a game of mother, may I? So I'll demonstrate it with Susan of that, essentially mm -hmm. that my body our bodies know our yeses and our nos. If we, ha by that I mean, whether I actually my answer would be a yes or a no faster than my brain or my cognition, my my prefrontal cortex would know. So it's practicing knowing in your body where that may be, and you do it sort of through mother may I. So anyway, so so Susan, I'll demonstrate with you, but I want each yeah. of you to pretend like you're Susan also, and I'm and I'm asking you as well, and tune into your own body and see if you can notice where you feel a yes or a no in your own body. So do you want me to stand up? However you're comfortable, how it does, I, whatever feels comfortable for you. I, okay. I, I like to be kind of standing so that I can, cause I like to yeah. move a little bit. All right. Okay. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that, that can be good. So, so, I, and I'm just, uh, I'm going to ask Susan a couple questions and then Susan, right. if you could reflect back whether you have a yes or no and how you know that too. Yeah. And then Everyone's body palette is different, uh, mm -hmm. but we'll, we'll get to see Susan's a little bit. So, um, Susan, can I be mm -hmm. your friend? Ah, yes, 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 yes. It's all right here. I'm okay. just like, Boo! it feels like confetti coming out of my chest. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yes, confetti out of your chest. Uh, yeah. You're getting compliments on your dress, too. <laughs> oh, thank, are you. Much yeah. thank you. Um, Su Susan, um, can I... Um, uh, can, can I, um, can I, uh, can I come on a 
car trip with you once I'm, next time I'm in Boston? I know you said you like driving around. Can I just be in your passenger seat and just drive around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have to think a little bit more about that. So that's more of a like, it's a more cerebral yes. Not so much as like, yeah, yeah, all right. I'll, yeah, of course. I had to think about it. In the back seat. I had to think about it. So I feel it up here a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's great. That's great noticing. Yeah. Um, and, um, Susan, uh, can I borrow $10,000? No, I feel my feet going this way. <laughs> yeah. like, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I, when I get a no, I literally step back. I find myself literally yeah. wanting to step back. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Well, so, right. so thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. And, and I appreciate everyone else who played along with that. Um, and I'll like my body signals with a yes are kind of like, like Susan said, there's like confetti in my chest or like, there's like an opening. I, I sense an opening and, and my shorthand is anything that's not that is probably a no, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, whether it's feet shifting or moving back, or sometimes I feel downward energy, but uh, I'm, I'm looking for like the real yes. Like what do you have a real, real yes to uh, bringing forth in the world, carrying through from your ancestors um, in your life. So we're gonna turn this over to you uh, for some reflection. If you have a little paper to jot things down, or if you wanna use some little app mm -hmm. on your phone, but we're gonna tee up some reflections here. Um, so, uh, I think they were on the slides too. So Pia yep. can have the ready for that multimedia 360 degrees of Becky and Susan coming at them. So, um, so the real, the real question though, and I'll say it out loud for you, if you want to journal, jot your notes, what comes up for you is reflecting on whatever bubble you're living inside right now, right? You may be like, um, like my sister, who's an essential worker. Oh, we'll come back to that. Sorry, Susan. We'll come right, we'll come right back. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, of, um, uh, so my sister leaves the house every day because she's still a nurse and she's still at Cedar sinai right? Uh, her husband leaves the house every day because he's a firefighter and that's what he does. Uh, me and my family, we've, through do, no shortage of privilege, uh, very rarely leave the house. And so my bubble is my wife, my two kids, and our cat. Uh, so whatever your bubble is, whatever that may be right now, um, reflect on that. And what do you have a full body absolute yes in terms of how that's going what you're experiencing that might be unique to to what's happening in the world right now but but bring it back down into your bubble whatever that is just take a moment and see what comes through to you where you feel your yes And no pressure at all, but if there's something you just feel so enthusiastic about that you want to chat in, have at it. Like, what's your yeses to, right? So I will say, for me, uh, I have a full body yes to continuing to have more quality time with my wife and kids than I, than I, than I did before this, this started. Full body yes to that. Uh, and it'll be different for each of us. Yeah, I lunch with my kids every day. Isn't that something, right? Resting and napping. I want to come to your house. <laughs> yes, I like that. <laughs> Great. Thank you for chatting these in. And we want to invite you to have multiple yeses. What else do you have a yes to? So what else? What other yeses do you have? Yeah, there's some yeses coming in. Intentional walks, dancing with my daughter every night, working outside right there with you, Grover. The ability to save money. Yeah, those are all beautiful. Mm. And I think seeing one another's also running and biking and running daily, Kenneth. Me too. Yeah. Listening to Casper. We got a cat person. Cindy, my, my cat salutes your cat. Yeah. All right. Yep. Great, great. Thank you for all of these. Yeah. And maybe one more, you know, if there's one more. And these yeses, you know, so much of our work as activists, as people who want to make change in the world can, can come and rightfully so from a no. And we're going to talk about that too. Um, but there's also the, the, the yes that, 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 that brings us aliveness too, right? It's that both of those I think are really important for keeping, keeping us sustained as being able to introduce change in the world. So um, I think, let me just check, are we also moving into no's? So now we wanna go to the flip yeah. side of that and give you an opportunity also reflecting on the bubble you're inside 
um, and I'm not asking you, Susan's going to blow it up into the whole world. And so we can do that. But like really inside your day to day life, your day to day bubble, is there something you have a no to? Right. Either that right, right now you don't want to do that anymore or that as soon as conditions change, we're not doing that anymore. Right. Working in an office. Right. 20 percent raise right there. Right. Yeah. A no to drama. Ah, these are great. Yeah. So who said getting up before 8 a.m.? You are my soulmate, Eunice Nichols. Yes. You are. <laughs> yeah. The, we, it, like, we, that, having children who are in school, our daily rhythm was set by uh, their capitalist structures at, of the nine to five work day, which the school day tags off of. And it was it was totally taking out of us out of our rhythm that now we're in that rhythm and it's, it's, it's very different. It's a very different experience, right? It's a beautiful. Susan, what about you? Any big yeses and nos for you? Um, my big yes was um, sunshine and just saying yes to myself. You know, I think that this time has really got me to thinking about like, just like, what do I want right now? And that that's all right to just kind of, um, you know, not agonize over bringing joy into my daily life. Um, and a big no is uh, bad online dating. I know I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> no more, no more. You know, I tell you what, I, 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 gave, I, saw, I, I, many, I know many people who've met their person through the online dating, but for me too, I was like, you know what, if I meet someone and I like them, I'm just going to let them know. And that's how I think, uh, I, yes. so this is, uh, I saw Christine and I was like, Hey, you want to make out sometime? <laughs> and <laughs> 10 years later, we're oh, married, married with kids. Yeah. So feel free. That's, to borrow that's that my line. goal this summer. Yeah. That's my goal is to be able to say to someone, Hey, you want to make you out? Sometime? Make out. So yeah. <laughs> feel, feel free to feel free to borrow liberally. So, Excellent. so this is great. We've got lots of good yeses, lots of good no's coming in. And for me, it just feels there's something about even just taking a minute of like, what are my yeses and my no's? That yeah. I, it's almost, it feels like if you're falling down an ice field, you kind of get a hook into something and can like, cause there's stuff that is happening that we do have agency over. I really appreciated how much you brought candy reminded, like we have so much agency, right? To, as a member of that. So Susan, I want to hand it back to you for then expanding our bubble outwards. Yeah, yeah. So let's think uh, a little bit more. We skipped over this a little bit earlier. Whoop, whoop, whoop. There we go. Um, yeah, let's go back. Just thinking about that, that some of you guys, I'm sure, have seen this tool before, the four eyes of oppression. But I also think it's a real helpful way of like pulling apart the world that we live in, especially now. It feels like there's so much going on inside of us, in our relationships, but also outside of us in the wider world. And I think this is just a helpful map for you to kind of locate, just like Becky's really helping us locate it in our body, also to locate it in like the body of the world that we live in, that there are these different levels inside us individually and in our relationships and then also this way of uh, looping out and so let's talk about what your yeses and no's on the outside are so as we think about this apocalyptic environment how do we hold the door open long enough to let the new world come in and I think that's a question for us to really think about um, as people are rushing back to normal we know there's no back to normal that we want to go to we don't want to go back to the same systems of oppression so we've got to kind of hold the door open on that. So reflecting on whatever institutions you're a part of, whether it's work or ones that are in your community, where are the ones that you have agency or connection or feel a sense of community? I want you to think for a moment, where do you have an absolute yes? Outside of your home and your, your individual relationships, in the places where you are working or praying or connecting or organizing, what's something that you have an absolute yes to? Take a minute and think about that. You can throw it in the chat if you want to. Okay, I can't see the chat. I don't know if anything's coming through in there, if people are thinking about it. Any ideas? Oh, I can't hear you. A couple. So we have some to my, yeah. my green lining family, an absolute yes to this community. Food, yeah. uh, I think a lot of yeses to uh, Hodor. Is that how you say his name? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm outing myself um, as I believe a not Game of Thrones yeah. person. I see growing, growing food. That's exciting. Yeah, providing resources to the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. My neighborhood, absolutely. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Listening to family okay. and youth about how our education system needs to change. Empowering yeah, students. Yes. Oh, it's it's yeah. going. It's just blowing up now. It's oh, like, so much good stuff. Yeah. So much good stuff. And. We don't all have to fix everything. Each of us just a hold, has to hold that door open in that little way. And as you're thinking about all of this amazing stuff that we can do, let's think also about what we ain't gonna do. So thinking about the cultures that you're a part of, um, you know, whether it's your, uh, your, your community, your being in touch with people that live around you, being in touch with people that have similar values. Um, what do you have a full body absolute yes to in terms of connecting with your culture and also where are the places that you're a no? As we're thinking about both our institutions and our cultures and our communities, where are your yeses and also where are your noes on that? Great, I love these ideas coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A little bit about some of those ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not getting paid what we're worth. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People. Yeah. Listening to ideas about intersectionality. So much good stuff going on here. Yeah, looking out for each other. I mean, I think this is a real opportunity to think about what matters and what our values are. Yeah. Hmm. Not defining people by their worth. This is great. This is really wonderful. Yeah. I think I think we're close to time. Did you did want to say so people can know how to get in touch with you? Yep. I'm gonna put I would it, love by to the do way, that. Susan does a blog that is so fantastic. I'm gonna put it in the chat. Oh, thank uh you. That around uh media popular culture race it's just it's 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 smntks yep dot com so it's awesome uh if you wanted to find me i'm at the billions institute dot com um it no, it's a great time. opportunities uh, to connect with you what are you up to this summer? How can people connect with you over the summer and with Billions? Yeah, uh, you know, we're, so we have we were exclusively live in person, but uh, mm -hmm. I think soon enough we'll have the book out. So uh, yeah. that that Susan and I are collaborating very deeply on. It's a book on using your three feet of influence to optimize your agency and making change in the world. And uh, so if you come to our website and get on our mailing list. I'm sure we'll mention to people about the book once it's, once it's done. <laughs> oh, yay. Congratulations yeah. to you. That is and, quite a labor. I can't wait for people to, I can't wait for people to see it. You guys have got to get this. This is really going to take what we did in this hour and just blow it up and allow you to really drag it into your world and, and make it a part of you. It's so awesome. exciting. What about you, Susan? Mm -hmm. if, people, if anybody's still here, what are you going to be doing this summer? I'm going to be writing this summer and I'm going to be socially distancing because I want to keep people safe. Um, and I'm always doing training and coaching. So I've been thinking a lot about uh, communication. How do we communicate um, in this new kind of environment? So maybe doing some offerings on that. Oh, well, listen, I want to please keep me up to date on those too. Yeah. Because yeah. I learn so much every time I get to hear from you. So thank you, Susan. Thank you everyone for being thank part of this. You. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This is yeah. awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to head over to the expo. Susan, you were saying you bought some really cool stuff at the expo. I bought a whole bunch of prints and I'm actually going to do a whole print wall of these really great, like liberatory posters in the place where I chill and read in the sun. So yeah. you guys should go check them out. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you everybody for coming.